This couple cried when they discovered how this fox returned the favor, saving their son. But before we start, please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss an upload from us. Also, leave a like right now. Many people love nature and take every chance they can get to be out there, breathing fresh air, hearing the sounds, and occasionally enjoying the company of animals. Over the holiday, my wife and son wanted to head out on a trip, so we rented a cabin near the river. It was a great opportunity for fun and fishing with the family. It had been a while since my son was asking to go, so he was really happy I finally got the time off for it. My grandparents had lived nearby, and between the smell of trees and calm, I felt comfortable there. Those memories are priceless, and unfortunately, my grandparents had to sell the house in the economic crisis, going to live in the city with us until they passed away. That was difficult. We packed up all of our necessities and gear, finally starting the journey. We left early, not managing to avoid the traffic, but we were able to get out of the city. The weather was excellent, my wife was in the passenger seat and our kid in the back. We were all enjoying the sights from the windows, though I paid a little more attention to my driving. We passed through many forests and small villages, we made the stops we planned for, eventually spending a bit more time than planned at the stopovers. By the time it was dark, we still had another two hours to go. My son was sleeping in the back as it started raining and I had to drive slower. Everything was alright, but then my wife noticed my son had unbuckled his seatbelt. Since he was sleeping, I got out of the car to stretch my legs and buckle him back in. On the way back, though, I saw the shape of an animal in the muddy road. I couldn't see what it was clearly, so I got closer and realized it was a little fox. It looked like the poor thing had been hit by a car. I was soaked through from the rain and headed back to the car, but asked myself how could I let this creature die? I couldn't understand how people could run over an animal then leave it there to suffer. I tried to coax its eyes open, but it closed them again. Although it was breathing, it looked like it was in a tough spot. My wife showed up and as we looked at each other, our son also came up. He approached and the fox started panting. I told him that there was nothing I could do for it. My son reacted quickly, saying we couldn't leave it there, that we should take it to the nearest vet, but any vets were too far away. Maybe someone in the nearest village would be able to help. My wife said she could give us a spare blanket. We carefully picked the fox up and put him in the back seat, wrapped in the blanket, resting its head on my son's lap. Driving as fast as I could under the circumstances, I reached the closest village and asked for a veterinarian. We were sent to an old lady's house being told that she was the closest to a vet that could help us. Luckily, the lights were still on in her house, so I ran out of the car and knocked on her door. She came out and asked us who we were, so I told her. Ma'am, we have an injured fox with us. We've asked around and were directed to you. You're the only one who can help us. She glanced over at the fox and told me to take it into the house. She started thoroughly checking it over, then took out a few bags of herbs and various medicines we hadn't seen before. She said that it only had a fracture in its leg and probably a concussion. We'd brought it in time, she said, as it was likely to have died if we were any later. She asked me to bring her some clean water from a well nearby. Take those buckets, and when you come back, leave them by the front door. Then go rest and come back to check in in a couple of days. Of course, we were surprised by her confidence, but decided to trust her. We fetched the water and left it by her door as she asked. We then took our son along with us. He'd spent the entire time with a foxer waiting by the door. We finally got back to our cabin, exhausted. I sent my son to sleep and sat on the balcony with my wife, just thinking about that poor fox. Would it be okay? We were just worried. The next day, we didn't really do anything we planned. We were so busy thinking about the poor fox. As a couple of days passed, we woke our son up around 5 a.m. and went to sit outside the cabin eating breakfast. Two hours later, we headed to the old woman's house, knocking on her door. It took her a while to respond, but she came out and told us we were just on time. The little fox was sitting there, paw wrapped in bandages, looking much better, albeit a bit weak still. When the fox saw my son, it got excited and its tail started wagging like a dog's. My son came up, sat next to it, and started petting its head gently like he had in the car, reassuring the fox that it would heal soon. The old lady told us that it would take a while to heal up and that it wouldn't be able to live in the wild until it recovered. It wasn't allowed to go back and had to be taken care of inside. The lady told us it was no coincidence that we met the fox either. She looked at our son and said, The fox and your son have a common destiny. They're connected in some way. 
We thanked her, my wife and I exchanging surprised glances, and the lady explained how to care for the fox, giving us a bag of herbs and medicine to give him. I offered her money in return and thanked her, but she immediately refused, saying that she just wanted us to keep in touch with her and visit as much as we could. We started taking care of the fox, and our son spent all his time with it. They became very close friends, and he called the fox red because of its color. Not very original, but hey. It learned with us and grew, being a little more aggressive with me and my wife from time to time, though not with my son. Some time passed, and we decided to head back into the old woman's village again, for the first time with a new member of the family, Red. Red recognized her and ran towards her and cuddled up, then joined my son in the yard to play. My wife and I were with the old woman in her cabin, helping her prepare a meal. As my son was playing with Red, suddenly the fox jumped on top of him, throwing him back. I ran and screamed at the fox, but saw that Red was lying weakened between my son and a dead snake. Red passed away shortly after, his face showing gratitude, I think. It turned out he'd saved my son. I remembered the old woman's words that him and my son's destinies were connected. We saved it, then it saved us. If we hadn't taken him with us that day, our son could have possibly died. We all cried for Red, of course, but we were grateful that he sacrificed himself for our son. Perhaps his destiny was to save us, much in the same way that ours was to save him. This is without a doubt one of this channel's more emotional stories. It does teach us about helping others and that what goes around comes around in a good way. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you won't miss our latest uploads.